Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and with me is Phil Chapixi. Hey, Robert. Hey, Phil and I are continuing our series on design patterns. Correct. And today we are going to talk about the template method pattern. True. So let's, as we've done with the other ones, pull up the definition, courtesy of Wikipedia. And the template method pattern defines the program skeleton of an algorithm in an operation deferring some steps to subclasses. Whole lot of mumble jumbo hmm. words, right? Really what we're talking about is we want base classes to have specific implementations of certain steps of a process. Okay. Right? We want the process to happen in the right order. We've been using the e-commerce example through all the episodes so far. Take the order, pick the order, pack the order, ship the order. Right. Right? Think about making a pizza. Mm -hmm. You certainly want to take the order, process the payment, which we forgot to mention just prior. Um, make the pizza. Yeah. Cook the pizza. Yeah. Cut the pizza, Deliver box the, the pizza. pizza. Well, we got to box it. Box it. Right? Uh, see, that's where we have Assume, a template. Assume, well, maybe, or plate it. Or plate it, right? right? Well, let's say it's going out for delivery. Yeah. So you don't want to get that order messed up. No. Right? You don't want to put it in the box and then put it in the oven. That would be bad. Right. Right? So we want this. But that can't possibly be the pattern. No, that's Do not the pattern. things in the right order. No. <laughs> but that's part of it, right? So we've got this template to do things. Yeah. Right? So defines the program skeleton of an algorithm. So the yes. algorithm is, how are we going to make this pizza? But it's the deferring some steps to subclasses That's that makes it pattern. part of the pattern. That's the because pattern. Because if it's just, oh, what are the five steps you need to do to make a pizza, get them in the right order, that's not the pattern. No, because just, you could do that with the command pattern. Right. Right? Well, you can do that by writing the right code for crying out well, loud. Well, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Um, so you can redefine certain steps of an algorithm without changing the algorithm structure, mm -hmm. right? So let's say if cooking the pizza, um, you're only going to half bake it or you're going to twice bake it or things like that, right? So a derived class can change how that particular step works, okay. but I haven't rewritten the algorithm. The algorithm right. itself is still the same. Cool. Right? All right. All right. So let's look at the code. And this is one of the rare ones where I don't have unit tests around it, but it's a pretty self-explanatory pattern. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a well, lot it's of pizza. It's going to pass. Yeah, there's pizza a lot is good. of pizza is good, right? <laughs> it's how you get all the developers in one room, right? You bring in free pies. So here is my abstract base pizza store. Okay. And I have to thank the. Uh, you know what? We haven't been mentioning resources in the other episodes, but we're one of the things that we're going to put in is a link to the Head First Design Patterns mm -hmm. book. And we'll put that in that all the show awesome notes. Book. Um, and so I want to thank them for um, inspiring the whole pizza theme that we'll mm -hmm. see in several other patterns as well. So here are pizza steps. Take the order, process the payment, mm -hmm. make the pizza, cook the pizza, deliver the pizza, and then we're returning this out of the method. Didn't really need to do that. Okay. Um, but we are, and We've got some things that aren't going to change regardless of the type of pizza. Right. Okay. Processing the payment yep. and delivering it happens the same yes. regardless of the type of pizza. I'm going to charge a credit card. I'm taking cash. However that works, mm -hmm. calculate the price. Calculate the price might be something that varies, but not actually processing the payment. And delivering the pizza is the same across all pizzas as it's well. It's entirely possible that depending on the pizza you make, you could deliver it differently, but... It is, it is but, possible, and then you would yeah. have to extend this right. to override that, yep. right? Okay. So we've got these base implementations for processing. So it's the fact that take order, make pizza, cook pizza, that's always going to happen, but how it happens can be different, and therefore you put it in an abstract class, that's what makes this the template method pattern. Yeah, and yes? to be clear, it doesn't have to be abstract. I could okay. have made those virtual sure. Sure. and have a yep. standard okay. implementation, mm -hmm. which, for example, we could have done with the deliver pizza. Okay. So if it's a hot pizza, it's always delivered the same way. Right. But let's say you're going to order a or deliver a half-baked pizza, right? the one that you finish cooking at mm -hmm. home. Maybe that has a different delivery style. Right. Maybe it has to be refrigerated. Okay. Who knows, right? But the fact that the implementations of these live somewhere else and are brought in at runtime 
That's yeah. what makes this the template going, method. Going back, okay. well, they're actually yeah. brought in at design time, design not run time. Because we've got these classes built. We're not changing the implementation at run time. Okay. We're, we're defining the implementation at design time. At run time, we can yeah, pick yeah, yeah. a different style of pizza store. But that's not the strategy pattern. We're just picking a different implementation. Okay. Right? So, again... We've got the program skeleton defined, and we're deferring some steps to subclasses. Mm -hmm. So we've deferred the make pizza, cook pizza, and take order to a subclass. Okay. Now the reason to take order, I, I love my Chicago style pizza. Mm -hmm. My wife loves the New York style pizza, but you take the order differently, right? Because it's a different set of ingredients and, and different options. So that really needs to be subclass. So I've got my New York style pizza store. And there's no real implementation here because again I'm just trying to show the pattern. Right. Okay. But for take order, I'm going to operate on this pizza for delivery which is defined in that abstract class. That's the I pizza in the abstract class. And this is probably a great place for the basic factory pattern. We haven't aired that show yet, but it'll be coming up as part of this series. Mm -hmm. But just know that we're going to return some sort of I pizza. Probably be a thin crust, it's New York style, yeah. spicy ingredients, lots of sauce, right? Uh, then we're going to make the pizza, and it's going to be thin crust, so we have to cook it less. Mm -hmm. right? If it was Chicago style pizza, we'd have to cook it longer, yeah. right? So that's a specific implementation that is deferred to the derived class. Uh, sorry, make and cook, right? Both fall into that. Right. Right, so probably cooked in a wood-fired oven for... New York style pizza mm -hmm. and a different style of onion for Chicago style pizza. Right. So that's the crux of the template method. Um, one thing that you'll notice when we get to the factories. So you would then have a separate class for the various types of pizza. Correct. And if you created a new type of pizza that you were offering, you would just have a new implement, a new class different style pizza store, which still has a take order, make pizza, cook pizza. You, the steps are the same, but how you do it is differently. But regardless, you're always processing the payment and delivering in the base class. Correct. Okay. And what you just maybe inadvertently called out is one of the problems with the template method is if I have a Upper East Side style pizza mm -hmm. where your only difference is maybe the types of ingredients, not pepperoni, cheese, but the type of cheese or the type of pepperoni. Mm -hmm. Now I have to create a whole new derived class to handle that one method. Okay. Right? Um, when we get into the, the factory patterns, and there's three, well, two and an honorable mention, but we'll just call it three, you'll see where it takes the template method and fixes that problem. But for, for a lot of implementations, this is great because, again, going back to that e-commerce thing, if I have probably the level I would do is books, perishables, fragile, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, again, taking the order, processing the payment, picking, packing, shipping. But if I know that perishables need to be shipped a certain way and packed a certain way, and fragiles versus books or, or things like that, right? So now we've got the take order and delivery in the base class. So I'm going to send it out to UPS or United States Post Office or i got to make sure I hit everybody since you don't have sponsors, <laughs> FedEx. I'd be like NASCAR here. I'll just have stickers all over there me for go. all the delivery there companies. Um, yeah, that would be the template method, right? Okay. So we've got this base. But, but you can have an explosion of classes with this. Right. Because every time I need a variation, now I'm making another. Yeah. Now, I could also implement this um, using the strategy pattern, right? Where I, can I, where the take order, make pizza, and cook pizza change at runtime based on the type of pizza that's being ordered? Yes. Since we covered so, the strategy so pattern I, in yep. the previous episode. And so, well, how would I know which one to use, or how would I decide? Well... Some might say it's a coin flip. Okay. Um, I would say that this is probably not the strategy pattern because you're really not changing at runtime. You're going to know ahead of time 
that this type of pizza gets cooked this way. Okay. And this other type of pizza gets cooked this other way. Now, if you wanted to take a Chicago-style pizza and not cook it all the way, then maybe that's a strategy pattern, right? Or maybe you should just make pizza the right way. Well, or you're stuck in a hotel <laughs> that doesn't have an oven and you bought okay. a DiGiorno pizza and you're trying to cook it in a pan. <laughs> so, which by the way, doesn't work. I can tell you from experience. So, but that's changing the implementation at runtime okay. as opposed to at design time, right? Got it. So, at design time, I'm changing it because I'm pulling in a different class. Right. I'm instantiating okay. a different yep. object of that interface. Got it. Right. At runtime, it's still, for the strategy pattern, it's still the same instance. Mm -hmm. I'm changing its behavior at runtime, not picking a different implementation detail. Okay. Makes sense. Yep. So we talked about some of the drawbacks that you could have code creep, right? Mm -hmm. And just explosion of classes. Um, but this is the, kind of the first time we mention patterns aren't in isolation normally. Some kind of are, like the, the simple factory mm -hmm. pattern you don't normally combine with a lot of others. But even when we look at this, what, what kind of screams out at you where I've got take order and make pizza and deliver pizza? You already said it. That's like the command pattern, right? Yeah. Go do something. I don't care how it gets done. Right. Just go do it, right? Mm -hmm. So now we've got the command pattern tying into the template method. Yep. We're also going to see that in the factory patterns and lots of different places. So while the command pattern and Memento were pretty simple to talk about, mm -hmm. the reason I felt they needed their own show is because they're foundational to so many others. Okay. And we're going to keep seeing this recurring theme of how these all work together. So let's say process payment and delivery pizza also changed based on the type of pizza. So all five of these methods um, we're in a different class. Okay. Is it still the temp the template method pattern? So by definition, but if all all of the if functionality, all of them, then we would actually be looking at the factory method. Okay. Pattern. Okay. Which they're very similar, and I thought about doing them together like we did a, um, the command and memento, mm -hmm. but they're different styles of patterns. Okay. This is a creational. Sorry, this is a behavioral pattern, mm -hmm. and the factory is creational. Okay. Um, so, it, and again, it's an arbitrary, it's not arbitrary, some wicked smart people, when they put their right. book together, came up with these definitions. But I, right. I never sit there and code and say, well, I need a behavioral here, and go through my list. I'm looking at this code saying, how, how has this been solved before? Mm -hmm. And I remember patterns. I don't always remember which category they're in. Right. Right. So you're going to see some that are similar, and they're cousins, sometimes second cousins, sometimes mm -hmm. they're not related at all. Um, but, but that's pretty common in, in software design, right? Because there's really nothing new that we're doing in software. I mean, there's new tooling, sure. and there's new processes like agile and test-driven development and things like that, but at the end of the day, what we're writing gets translated into ones and zeros and goes through a processor and does something. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. So, yep. Yep. Um, I think that's it. Though. Okay, cool. I think that nails it. Template method pattern. Yes. Sweet. All right, hope you enjoyed that. See you next time when we'll look at another pattern. Thank you very much.